Good morning. Welcome back to the vlog. Let's just get right into it. We got a busy day today. Today is the, uh, I don't know, third day of the World Series, but it's my first day heading down towards the Strip. So I'm going to head to the Strip, going to meet a friend for lunch, then I got to come back up here. I got things to do here that are none of your business at all. And then we're going to get into some, uh, some cash play tonight. At some point, I got to mix in a tournament, right? It's the World Series. I have to mix in a tournament. At least one. Ugh. Okay, we have made it to alleys. And the first impression, I miss the Rio parking situation. Rio parking situation, much better. That's just impression number one though. So, if you were looking for the first part of this vlog to be poker um, heavy, it wasn't. I spent most of the uh, morning with this guy, Matt Bond, poker vlogger extraordinaire. I knew you were going to say extraordinaire, actually. Extraordinaire. You're, you're extraordinary. You're hood. That's what it is. It's hood <laughs> poker right here. If you're looking for favorable poker, not this guy. If you're looking for a poker situation where people are tall and jacks jiggities, not this guy. You're looking for somebody jumping over things, saying parkour and all this other stuff? Not this guy. But if you're looking for hood poker, taking it to the streets, Matt Bond, your man. We do it. We get it done. Either they don't know, don't show, I don't care about what's going on in the hood. Sometimes. <laughs> but back to the real. I'm headed to the parking garage. I'm gonna jump in the car. I need to head back home. I need to finish some things up there. <sighs> then we're gonna jump into a cash game later this uh, this evening. Right? Gonna play some play poker. <laughs> All right, spent a good part of the midday having lunch with Mr. Matt Vaughn. Took a look around the new WSOP tournament area. Quite impressive. I am quite impressed with everything they have going on here, except for the parking. Parking is um, next level annoying. With that being said, headed back to the car. I need to head back home, wrap some things up before coming back down to the strip to put in, hopefully, quite a long session tonight. So, I'll see you when I see you. Which will probably be in three hours. Three hours. So, hours after leaving the World Series this morning, I got in a good rest. I'm nice and rested. I'm here at the win with Lily. We're gonna get into some, uh, some action. We're gonna get into some uh, some cash action here, rather than dealing with the craziness that is at Paris and Bally's tonight. 
Swish me luck. Wish us luck. She's playing too. Although it's Friday night, the Encore Poker Room has a lot of tables, so the wait isn't too long for a 2-5 seat. I grab $1,500 in chips from the cage, make my way to the table, and settle in for what I hope is to be a long night. Right out of the gate, I mean right out of the gate, the poker gods start playing jokes. Under the Gun opens to 25, and I fold pocket deuces next to act, which is the correct play. I can't lie though, it was kind of annoying to see that I would have flopped quads in one, but what now? Poker actually isn't about winning and losing. Poker is about making the right decision. You got to know when to call, when to fold, and when to push all in. Um, thanks, I guess. But nobody even asked you any of that. So you can just go ahead and see yourself out. No, no, not through the door. How about try going out the window? We are super early in this session, literally less than 15 minutes in when this hand goes down. The low jack opens to $15, I find a call on the button with 9-8 of clubs, and the big blind comes along. Everything is pretty standard pre-flop. I'm not sure what the rest of the flop is going to be, but that card, that card is good for me. The next card I see is the 8 of spades, another great card. However, the last card on the flop, the 7 of hearts. Ugh. This flop just went from great to treacherous real quick. The big blind checks and the low jack c-bets for $30. Pretty large as he's stuck in the middle of two players. A board this coordinated is scary. Yes, I have a decent hand. It's weird calling top two medium strength, but that's about what it is. I have nowhere near a lock on this pot. Keeping that in mind, I call, as does the big blind. The turn brings the queen of diamonds, which also puts two diamonds on the board. Anyone floating with a gut shot might also now have top pair. The big blind checks again, as does the low jack. My hand, if it is in fact the head, is incredibly vulnerable. I bet $80 fully expecting this hand to go fold call or call call or fold fold. I'm learning not to expect things. The big blind tanks for a while and then check raises to $250, which causes the low jack to insta fold, and now I'm in the hot seat. Typically, flop check raises are a mixed bag of nuts and draws and sets, but turn check raises over large bets? That's different. Those lean heavily into either nutted hands or total air. This is a tricky one. I block some of the sets, but unblock diamonds, and then there's the possibility that he could have just flopped a straight, and he thinks I have diamonds. I think about this one to myself for a while before settling on a call, but I'm scared. The river four hearts changes absolutely nothing, and he doesn't take too long with it before picking up a 1k chip and saying, 550. And I was like, all right, I'll stop. Like, so call pre, check call flop, check raise turn, lead river for three force pot. Realistically, he can possibly have a set of sevens, jack 10 suited, five six suited, or a ton of missed combo draws. But also dancing around in my head is the fact that this isn't the way the player pool typically plays miss draws. They go check give up on river. Mostly. My stubbornness gets the best of me and I find the crying call. Pot was like I'm king high 400. What's up? King high. So he says king high. And 15 minutes into the session, I'm up a chunk. Later, I get into a hand in which the hijack, a fun guy that appears not to play poker very often and plays very tight, opens to $10. Looking down at pocket queens in the cutoff, I raise to $40 and the button, our king high friend from earlier, flats my raise. The hijack chooses to come along and three of us see this flop. Deuce of hearts, eight of diamonds, king of clubs. And the hijack leads with a check. Stuck in the middle, I check as well. Over the last hour or so, I've been able to deduce that the player on my left, Mr. King High, is a pretty solid player. He's staying semi-balanced and knows how to use aggression. The button bets $75 in the hijack snap calls. Holding the nut under pair in a completely disconnected board isn't bad. 
However, the bet sizing of the button coupled with the snap call of the hijack means I've most likely been out flopped and drawing the two outs. I find the fold. Although no longer in the hand, I see the turn pair the eight and put two clubs on board. The hijack checks again and the button fires $125. The hijack calls once more. The hijack clearly has a king. Everyone in the room knows that at this point. The river brings the jack of clubs completing the backdoor flush and the hijack checks for the last time. After a short tank, the button loads up $300 and drops it into the middle and 13 seconds later, the hijack folds. Well, that sucks. I really wanted to see those two hands. Although it's the same seat, our King High friend has left the game at this point and has been replaced by a player that I don't know anything about. The player in the small blind has posted, so there is essentially just one blind here. Under the gun opens for $20 and an early position player flats. Action folds to me on the button and I find a raise with King 10 of diamonds to $95. The under the gun player calls, which should instantly remove a bunch of the super strong hands from his range like aces, kings, ace king, ace queen. It is likely, however, that he still does have a strong hand. The early position player folds. Heads up, we see a flop of ace of spades, seven of clubs, nine of clubs, and the under the gun player checks. Obviously, I didn't hit this board in any meaningful way, but due to my pre-flop action, I still have a really strong range. It shouldn't take much to take this pot down, assuming he doesn't have an ace. I bet $65 into the $210 pot, and he quickly folds. in the session I think I have a pretty solid feel for what's going on in this game. That is to say it's playing like most 2-5 games. Some limping, a lot of calling both in position and out, three bet calls, cold calling four bets, all the calls are happening. There's no balance here and trying to play balanced, although it is a winning strategy, won't really earn you the most money. Just exploit. It's no secret to the table that I've been opening and three betting pretty wide preflop really trying to drag people into the deep water where they make bigger mistakes. In this hand, the hijack opens to $15 and I peek down and just happen to have the best hand in the entire game. Aces. Well, if I'm three betting the king nine suited of the world, I'm definitely three betting this. I make it $70, tighten my lats and core and prepare for battle. Unnecessary. When action folds around to the hijack, he just folds. The very next hand, a super short stack limps from early position and a friend that I used to play with in St. Louis raises to $25 from the low jack. Action folds to me and I look down at pocket queens. Another hand where it raises in order and I make it $100. The small blind instantly grabs chips for what I'm assuming is going to be a pretty large re-raise, but he just calls. 
The limper folds and now action is back on the low jack. She goes into the tank for about 11 seconds, grabs chips for a raise, but then overcalls. I'm thoroughly confused. Already, this hand is a little off the rails. The flop? Ace of spades, three of spades, three of clubs. The small blind checks, the low jack checks, and I don't like this at all. Second nut under pair is decent, but the likelihood that one of these two has an ace is high. Me betting small here to get value from smaller pairs is an option, but I pass on it. I check as well. The turn brings the ten of diamonds and the small blind checks again. It's at this point the low jack bet's about half pot. It's a pretty big bet out of position into the preflop raiser with the small blind still in the mix. This would be a pretty suicidal bluff in this spot, and she's not crazy. I'm not sure if she has an ace or quads, but I know that she's not playing jacks this way, nor is she betting a 10. With the small blind still behind me, with a range that should be pretty tight, I find the fold. The small blind calls, and they, without me, are off to the river. The river jack of clubs could bring fireworks. It's not out of the realm of possibilities that there are two full houses here. However, no blood is shed and they both check. The small blind tables the other two queens and the low jack wins this pot with ace eight of diamonds. Here's a pro tip for you. Don't do what I do. I'm not always the smartest. In fact, in this hand, I'm pretty damn dumb. The table is very short here and the under the gun player is actually the hijack. He opens for $15, the cutoff calls, and the button calls. The small blind folds and I look down at king 10 of diamonds from the big blind. This hand, with these positions, this is a lower percentage squeeze. But this is one of those times. I make it $100. The trick with the squeeze is getting through the original razor. Theoretically, the cutoff and button most likely have weaker hands or they would have raised the hijack themselves, right? Well, the hijack does fold, as does the cutoff. However, and this is pretty abnormal, the button calls. And this is where I noticed the huge mistake I made with squeezing here. The button is incredibly short. After his call, he literally has $300 or about 60 big blinds behind. That leaves almost no room for post-flop play as the pot is almost that big as is. In order to win this hand, I'm just going to have to hit the flop in some way and just wind up with the best hand on the river. And making hands is hard to do. The flop of jack of hearts, five of hearts, three of clubs isn't helping my cause. I'm done with this hand, so I check. The button now bets 200 of his remaining $300, which elicits a pretty quick fold for me. Moral of this story, be very cognizant of stock sizes. You got it, you got it. Okay. Let's see. Late Friday night, mid-session update time, kinda. We're probably um, 
an hour or two past the mid-session update time, and I know this isn't my normal mid-session update spot when I'm here at the Encore, but the beach club is open. And when the beach club is open, that exit by the poker room, madness. We ain't doing no mid-session updates there. So, what's going on in my game is as soon as I got here, instant running good, instant snipping out bluffs, I flop trips one hand, things are just working. That was probably about three hours ago. Since then, I think I've picked up pocket queens probably three or four times. I've lost with them probably three or four times. I guess the silver lining is I didn't lose too much even when I did lose with them. But we just can't make a hand. Or we just can't have a hand hold up. So we're slowly bleeding, but not in a bad way. It's not like I'm playing horribly. It's just, that's how it be sometimes. That's just how it be. Um, my table got short. I think they just filled us back up. It's probably around 1.30 in the morning. And yeah, that's it. That's the whole update. So the plan now, go back in, see if we can make some things happen for maybe another hour or two, and then get the hell out of here. Because the World Series is in town, and we're gonna be doing this Saturday and Sunday, and you know, World Series shit. late now and the table dynamics have changed again. We are in the extremely limp happy portion of the night. Here under the gun limps, hijack limps, cut off limps, and I'm in the small blind with pocket nines. The limping ends. I bump it up to $35 and I get one caller. The hijack. From player population experience, his limp call means he likely has a pocket pair. Or, and this is becoming rarer, he's on the I think ace-king is just a drawing hand contingent. Either way, we're off to a flop. Ace, deuce, three, rainbow. Out of position, but with the betting lead and a range that still has quite a few strong aces in it, I continue for $25 and he just folds. Most likely, I was ahead the entire time, but if I ever, ever, ever get him to fold pocket tens here, this is a big win. The very next hand, I'm on the button, because that's what happens after the small blind. Still shorthanded, as you can see, I look down at damn near a top-tier, ultra-premium hand in Ace-3 suited, and action is folded to me. As I'm grabbing chips to open, the dealer accidentally exposes the three of spades. I'm literally in my betting motion as this happens, and my brain is now going haywire, trying to figure out how having one less three available should affect my open. Ooh, three of spades exposed. $20. It doesn't matter because gravity is now in full effect and my chips drop onto the felt. This doesn't really matter either as both blinds fold and I'm now $7 richer even with the dead three. Could have used that. Uh, that was a pivotal, that was a very important card for my hand. <laughs> we move on to the next hand and if you are following along, you will know that I am now in the cutoff. The player in the hijack is upset that our game is shorthanded and has put his chips in the rack to leave, but has decided to limp into this hand. I find a race at $20 with jack 10 of clubs in the exiting hijack is my only caller. Ace of spades, jack of diamonds, deuce of clubs. The hijack checks and I could go either way with betting this one, but more times than not, I check, as I do here. As far as turns go, the 10 of hearts is a good one, but the hijack has now decided to probe and leads for $30. A raise for me might be a bit of an overplay, so I call. The river king of spades I don't particularly like. It puts a four-liner to a straight on board. Now the frustrated hijack bets $55. I should probably just fold here, but two pair. I have two pair in a shorthanded game versus a shorthanded, hating, tilting off hijack with chips in the rack. I'm stubborn. I call. 
And he wins this one with Ace Deuce offsuit. I've ever done. First, I'll start with in for 1500, out for 2168. Then I will add to that after the mid session update, I think I went 60 to 90 minutes without playing a damn thing, not a single hand. B pip zero. Had nothing to play. In the hands that I did have to play, I couldn't play them. So with that, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to get out of here. It's 2.30 in the morning. We're going to get some sleep and we're going to get an early start tomorrow. So if you like the vlogs, like the vlogs, uh, leave me a comment and I will probably respond. Probably. Bye. There's no rule that says I have to start the vlog at the beginning of the session. There's really even no rule that says I have to start the vlog at my house. And every morning I wake up at seven o'clock The first sunbeams shine into my room I need to get up, brush my teeth And wash my face And then go eat some food All mornings are the same I don't want to play this game Let me go back to sleep. Tell the alarm not to beep. Just let me dream some more. Well, obviously, if I'm on the uh, roof of the Bellagio parking structure, the night is at a close. Hey, I should make it 300, three kilometers. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. We just move all in pre flop. <laughs> like, I was willing to get it all in pre. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Yeah. Easy to go all in. Yeah. I know you didn't do it. Yeah, if you move all in pre, I just call. No, it's You're a student. Good morning on June. To do some stuff here at home. And then, I, and then we'll probably get into some cash games tonight. And I'll. But for now. Off to the strap. What'd you have there? Ace 10? Ace 8. Ace 8. Ace 8. <laughs> have you met my friend Melissa? Good morning and welcome back to the vlog and all that stuff. We got a busy day today. You know? We got time. Okay, we have made it to. Uh, okay, we've made it into the parking garage at Bally's. First impressions. Um, and I already knew this. Parking at Bally's. Sucks. Feature. <laughs> See? It's hard to blow that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So, what's going on at my table is off to a fiery start. Since then, I think I've picked up pocket queens 15 different times, won none of them. Luckily for me, I didn't. Let me go back to sleep. Tell the alarm not to beep. Just let me dream.